first reading comes from the book of Joel, the second chapter. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy hill. Let all who live in the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is close at hand, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and blackness. Like dawn spreading across the mountains, a large and mighty army comes such as never was of old, nor ever will be in ages to come. Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. Who knows? He may turn and have pity and leave behind a blessing. Grain offerings and drink offerings for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, declare a holy fast, call a sacred assembly. Gather the people, consecrate the assembly, bring together the elders, gather the children, those nursing at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Let the priests who minister before the Lord weep between the temple porch and the altar. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord. Do not make your inheritance an object of scorn, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? The word of the Lord. The second reading comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. In 6. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As God's fellow workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, in the time of my favor I heard you, and in the day of salvation I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. We put no stumbling block in anyone's path, so that our ministry will not be discredited. Rather, as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, in great endurance, in troubles, hardships, and distresses, in beatings, imprisonments, and riots, in hard work, sleepless nights, and hunger, in purity, understanding, patience, and kindness, in the Holy Spirit, and in sincere love, in truthful speech, and in the power of God, with weapons of righteousness in the right hand and in the left, through glory and dishonor, bad report and good report, Genuine, yet regarded as impostors, known, yet regarded as unknown, dying, and yet we live on, beaten, and yet not killed, sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, poor, yet making many rich, having nothing, and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Now we continue with our Lenten Gospel Acclamation. Please rise as you're able and sing with me. Father who is unseen. 
Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show people they are fasting. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious that you are fasting. But only to your Father, who is unseen, and your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. And you may be seated. Lent, 
You have 24 hours multiplied by 40 days, you get 960 hours. Now I know that none of us have 960 hours in the next 40 days to spend however we please, right? We have to sleep, we have to eat, we have to exercise, and we need to work and go to school and take care of families and take care of responsibilities that are in our lives. And oftentimes, thank you, Dalton, appreciate that. Um, oftentimes, when you subtract all of the demands on your time, there seems to be no time left, nothing left over for anything else. And God knows this. God knows how hard we work, how much we have to get done, how little our time of our time is really free and open. As Jesus says in our gospel reading tonight, our Father in heaven knows everything about us, sees everything, knows even the little things that we do in secret. The things we think about, the things that we worry about, especially those things in our secret heart of hearts. And yet God says to us, knowing how stressed we are, how sick and tired we may be, how at a loss for time we really are, God says to us, return to me with all your heart. Offer to me your dearest treasures, including and especially your precious time. Precious precisely because there is so little of it. Give me your time. Spend it with me. Spend it on me, says God. Not because I need it, not because I want you to feel more burdened or more stressed, more exhausted, more put upon. Not at all. No. In fact, exactly the opposite. The time you give to me, says the Lord, the time you give to me will be time when I will strengthen you. Time when I will take up your burdens for you. Time when I will heal you. Time when I will reveal to you the secrets and the answers that you long for most. Time when I will want nothing from you but to love you and to make you powerful and peaceful and whole. The time you spend with me says your loving Heavenly Father. Even just one single hour will give you everything you need to make the most of those other 23 hours in your day. You will store up treasures of peace and joy, power and might, wisdom and honor and love and glory that no one can take away from you. So here we are at the beginning of life. The very first day, the first 24 hours, with 40 more days to follow, if you count Easter too, so we'll get some bonus in there, right? A total of 960 hours you can spend in this season of Lent. It's like the little bank you have. And I'd like to offer every adult and teen in this room in this church tonight, an invitation, a personal challenge, really. Can you think of three things you could do each week during Lent that would make it possible for you to spend a little more time with God? Let God work on your heart. Let God lift up your soul. So, you got your cards, right? You got your pens, pencils. Writing a little bit, magic marker, whatever it might be. On one side of this card, I want you to write down three things, three X 
extra things you might do with your time to give more time to God, to spend more time with God. Now, I don't know what, I don't, I don't, I, and I don't want to know what they are. You're not going to report these or turn these in for homework credit or something like that if you're in confirmation again. Uh, these three things are just between you and God. Okay? No one will ever need to know what you wrote down. It's your secret offering, just like the reading says. Your secret offering. And don't worry right now if you have no extra time at all, nothing to spare. Just pretend with me, can you, for a moment, that you have all the time in the world. Think about it. What extra things could you do? Read the Bible for 10 minutes a day. Pray when you wake up in the morning for an extra 10 minutes. And you know, don't count the things you already do, because we want to we want to add something. Don't count Sunday worship, that's normal. It's something that should be not extra. But you can count going to the Wednesday night Lenten worship. That's not normal. Or you could count help with some ministry in the church that you've never tried before. Like maybe visiting one of our homebound members. You could set a goal, like one a week or something. And we can tell you who they are. It has their names listed. Our bulletin has their names listed. Try it out just for Lent. I see you writing, so just keep going. Write down three new or different things you want to try. sure everyone's got, or they've got in their heads at least one thing, right? Is it good? At least one? Because you can finish this later. This isn't something you have to turn in again tonight. Now imagine spending as little as one hour a week on, on each of these. If you've got two, if you've got three, imagine if you did that over the next 40 days. That's three hours a week you can offer to spend with God. You think that you could do that? So, like a New Year's resolution, it always seems great on January the first, right? But at this point, do you think you could do that, or are you worried that you don't even have that much time to spare? I mean, that's highly possible. I know some of your schedules. I know what it looks like. I'm making eye contact here. Uh, <laughs> no worries. No guilt. Okay. The last thing that you need is more burdens. What if I told you there's a way that you can find those three more hours and not even add one extra minute to your busy schedule? Well, that's what the other side of the card is for. So turn the card over, unless you throw it really big and you're already spilling over. <laughs> but turn the card over to the other side. This is the second part of the challenge. What three things could you set aside, give up, as it were, that might total an hour a week? Again, you offer that time to God instead, just for this holy 40 days of Lent. Could you give up 10 minutes of television a day, or 10 minutes? Yeah, I mean, those 10 minutes would total an hour a week, if you, if you count the six days and then the Sabbath day. So if that's for you, yeah, go ahead, write down 10 minutes daily a week on that give-up side, that set-aside side. Or how about 10 minutes of uh, Facebook or, uh, you know, whatever, something like that. Uh, I know I get so sucked into that that 10 minutes becomes an hour easily. So maybe you just set yourself a time limit where you ordinarily do more than that. You just, you don't spend that extra time doing that. Write that one down. How about this? How many minutes each day do you spend worrying? Or maybe complaining. I've done both. In fact, I said a bad word out loud for somebody who was honking a horn behind me. Pastor Allison was with me this morning. <laughs> I'm like, did that come out of my mouth? 
Well, maybe we say, I'm going to give up some of my worry time to you, God. You could do that, right? Then write that down. Go ahead. Worry time. And actively prepare yourself to find that. Or write down complaining time, just when I feel that gripe coming on. Just so set that time aside. Maybe that could total up 10 minutes a day of worry and complain, equally one hour a week. You can write that down as one of your three things. Or fill it up with more. Fill around that card. Things that you can give up. If, you, if you've taken this challenge and you're writing down, that's great. Keep writing. You are building a card that on one side has as many as three ways you can plan to spend time with God. And on the other side, as many as three or maybe more than three things you can give up doing to make that extra time for God. And if you haven't finished it, yes, finish it later. But either way, I invite you to give God this gift and give yourself this gift. Give your family this gift. It will actually help in a lot of ways in helping you center yourself back in what gives you life and joy. It's absolutely true. And then I invite you to take that card with you and carry it around Put it in a pocket or a purse that you know you'll be able to find. If you do take a picture of it with your phone, because you might accidentally wash it, oh, that could be me. Do that. That's cool. And what we're going to do is when we get all the way to Good Friday, we're going to call that an offering. And you can give that car back to God in that we won't do anything with them. We'll just scour them up. Maybe we'll burn them as part of our ashes for next year. That's crazy, huh? It doesn't matter whether you make all your goals or not. Again, this is not um, another reason to measure your goodness. But for God to invite you to engage with the person that loves you the most, the being that made you. And we're going to be talking ashes to ashes, dust to dust. It's to remind us that we can't do everything. That death does catch up with us but that we're also created creatures and that our Creator wants to bear those burdens for us. So turn them over to God who loves you no matter what, who always takes us back, who always walks alongside of us, and who always gives us His life, His treasures, His time, infinite time with us. Are we good? And all those people say, Amen. Let's say, Amen. Amen. Amen.